505 Worlds is a much-traveled championship. In 18 years, it's visited nine countries, including Australia, Argentina, Finland, and Morocco. Now, in 1973, it's on the move again. This time to the mysterious east, to the rich and crammed island of Hong Kong. Getting in from around the world, cosseted by fabled eastern hospitality, the lucky competitors pause en route at Singapore. Crowded, polyglot, colourful, full of contrasts, with skyscrapers slotted in between temples. To Western eyes, this new city-state holds a strange fascination. It's a first glimpse of the Orient. This is the first time that Dunhill have sponsored a regatta outside Britain. This is also the first time a World Sailing Championship has been held in Hong Kong. The first time that most of the competitors have been in the Orient. Chairman of the race committee hints at what this entailed. For the World Championships, we selected the site in the southwest of the colony area, which is pretty unrestricted as far as winds are concerned. We have a large open area of water, and most important of all, a very good backup facility very close to this on the beach of Repulse Bay. There will be six races, five to count. An expanded Olympic course has been laid to the south of Hong Kong Island in the open China Sea. Instead of the normal six legs, there are nine. The first beat being followed by two reaches to complete a triangle. Next, the second beat, followed by the square run. Then the third beat and two more reaches for a second triangle. And finally, a fourth beat up to the finish. At least 16 miles, sometimes more with more sail handling than on the conventional Olympic course. For the first race, the wind is a brisk 15 knots easterly with a bumpy cross swell from seaward. After one recall, the great fleet is away. Brian Downham, a Johannesburg sailor who does all his racing on lakes, leads around the first mark, then loses on the reaches. Soon it becomes a duel between Jeff Brow, a Los Angeles airline pilot, and Peter White, a British sailmaker. So we got the break early on, really. Once you're up there, it's fairly easy to stay there, even if you haven't got much speed. But when you're back, even if you've got speed, it's difficult to get up there. The first leg is so important. If you do the first leg badly, then, you know, the race is over almost. We lost the lead twice and got it back again. So I think, yes, I think we've got the speed. If the wind stays up, we've got speed. We can get closer into the wind than most of the other boats. White winds. Brow comes second. 
race two. Wind lighter, but freshening. Also, it's veered so that it blows more from the sea. Dennis Surtees, a San Francisco doctor born in Whitstable, leads the scramble around the weather mark. Dan Yellow of France is second, and Britain's ex-champ Larry Marks third. We were pretty close behind the other two, and we just went slightly to weather. I think we were a bit quicker getting the sail up and spinning around. This enabled us to go to first. Marks, carrying a big Bruce Bank spinnaker, goes on to win. Larry Marks, twice world champion, is crewed this season by the celebrated Julian Brook Horton. Horton has already crewed his way to world titles in the Flying Dutchman and Fireballs. I think well, you have to have a mind of your own. I think you have to work with your helmsman. He's spending most of his time just keeping the boat going as fast as possible. Um, and if he's sort of aware of generally what's happening, a quick look and you can say, yeah, we're right or we're wrong, or uh, this sort of thing. Then downwind, and you're away together. Surtees hangs on to come second. The young Jeff Brow scoots away so fast downwind, he's third at the finish, moving into the points lead. Danielu comes fourth. Nicholas Loday, the defending champion, is seventh. Mark Bethwaite, Australian Olympic FD skipper, is tenth. He easily won the Far Eastern Championship the previous week. Another Frenchman, Olympic silver medalist Yves Pajot, is fifth. He won his medal in the Flying Dutchman. How does he like the five O's? I prefer the Flying kind. Yes. It's a uh, surprise more. It's bigger. It's bigger. <laughs> yeah. More thrilling day. Yeah. Certainly, I think the level of dedication is far greater in the Flying Dutchman, and this is not necessarily a good thing because you don't enjoy your sailing so much. Oh yeah, far better than an FD would be because it's. You know, you can tack and get going again quite quickly. Yeah, you can just throw it around, sort of pick everything up and jump out the other side. Yeah. Neil Pride, a local sailor, shows signs of having done this sort of thing before. In the east, everything looks different, even the spectator boats. The Hong Kong Hilton has its own spectator boat. The third race starts by looking like an action replay of race two. Again, Surtees leads around the first mark. Again, Marks chases him, and after more tactics, this time overtakes. That great white circus tent of a spinnaker helps him do it. This race is being sailed starboard handed, clockwise that is.
the wind changes and they finish the second reach with spinnakers down. On the second beat, Mark Bethwaite, who has so far had two poor results, sails inshore, hunting for shifts, and finds them. When you took the bleed, it was by tacking to the left a bit further than Surtees and Marks, wasn't it? That's right, but we actually got past Marks on speed. Rather than I just got the impression that Marks and Surtees might have been dicing a bit, and you slipped away, picked up a shift, and... Could be. Uh... But in any case, it was, it was good for us. Nick Leday looks more than ever like an ex-champ when he gets himself disqualified for touching Kay's Nata, the local expert, when re-rounding a boy he has hit. Bethwaite wins. Marks is second. White third. And Australian Rod Dalgleish fourth. Hong Kong in November. Very hot. We're going out in the t-shirt and shorts. Whereas in the UK, yeah, we'd be going out in wetsuits and all the local boys here are going out in wetsuits now which is, they would think we're all crazy because we're just wearing a t-shirt, but, you know, we're finding it so hot, it's unbelievable. Dunhill Yachting Sponsorship turns up in the most surprising places. This Chinese temple is actually the lifeguard club. Altogether, eight winners of the previous 17 championships have gathered in Hong Kong. Veteran Marcel Buffet. For me, I'm too old. <laughs> Up till now, the form, like the sunshine, had remained surprisingly consistent. But this was another day. Marx capsizes before the start, is sat on by a British colleague, gets a twist in his spinnaker downhaul and a plastic bag around his centreboard. White breaks a trapeze wire but at least this forces him about and out to sea, where the shifts are today. In the closing stages, Bethwaite breaks his spinnaker halyard. Pajot does get it right, and leads around the first mark, chased by Derek Ferrand and Gordon Yogi Wilson. By the second jive mark, with only a reach and beat remaining, John Locke leads a tight race. Unwisely, as it turns out, he lowers his spinner before the jive. Matty Ruyanen carries his around the boy. So do Kerwood, Farrant and White. Locke loses his lead to Ruyen, a Finn who only started sailing 5-0s this season. Locke is second. The steady Pajot, third. Kerwood, fourth. The fourth day upsets the points rankings, with Surtees and Brow finishing in the middle 20s and Marks down to 31st. After the race, the up-to-the-minute leaderboard at the Dunhill Information Centre comes in for some long and agonising appraisal. Already, several of the favourites have run out of discard races. Japan's Tsuji finds himself disqualified from his ninth place because of an early start. 
which is a pity since he's the best of a large and well-organized national team sailing home-built boats, and he's improved in every race. Day five. There's the usual tight fight to the first mark, with Anderson of Sweden squeezing around first, followed by Tsuji. On the reaches, the wind steadily dies. Then, onto the peaceful scene, lumbers a Russian timber ship, too big and moving too fast for the coarse patrol boats to be able to shoo it away. Before he's through, the ship has taken almost everybody's wind, what wind there was and laid down a bumpy road of wash. Bethwaite is far behind. Tsuji, a municipal worker from Yokohama, turns the jibe mark first, but takes his time jibing. There's more slop than wind now and the Japanese decide to take down their spinnaker. Tsuji rehoists his sail, but still no wind seeps his way, though it's already crept towards those to weather and carried them hundreds of yards closer to the lee mark. Kerwood wins by a huge four minutes from the experienced French pair Patrick Aigley and Bruno Troublet and Britain's Rob Napier and Simon Wakeford. Incredibly, Beth Waite and Pitts have pulled up to fifth. There is more chance uh, when the conditions are difficult than uh, when it's straightaway sailing conditions. And uh, I think that uh, had the breeze come in, when we were so far back, we could not have possibly come through as we did. We just uh, had to make do with what we had and uh, perhaps we were trying a bit harder than other people. Bonsoir, messieurs. Hey, le plus important, the most important is <laughs> Pajot came seventh yeah, exactly. and is quite happy that about it. Important. I prefer a strong wind. <laughs> it's too light, it's very difficult. There's a wind uh, challenge and uh, not very good. <laughs> Though the fleet's only two Olympic hands were able to cope with the light air pretty well, others came unstuck. Marx came 31st for the second day running, Brow was 54th. Surtees was 19. The winds were lighter than we thought they were going to be, and the water um, heavier, sloppier. We sail a lot in, in rough seas, and we sail in light winds too, but when we've got rough seas, we've got heavy wind, and when we've got light winds, we've got flat water. We got this big swell, which was tends to throw the boats around a lot, because they're only light boat, and you come up the top of a wave, and the thing sort of tries to chuck you sideways. Um, the boat heels, you get a lot of wind, the wind hits you because you've come up the top, and then you go down the wave and the thing starts to fall over on top of you. White retired when lying in the 60s, then finds he's moved into the points lead vacated by Marx. The Dunhill leaderboard shows that with one race to go, White leads on 35.7, Fajot is second, 38.7, and Bethwaite is third on 41. The rest of the field are all eight points and more behind. The critical last day is once again chill and grey, but this time low speeding clouds promise plenty of wind. There's 20 knots on the course and the swell is the highest yet. The buoy end is favoured at the start. Some are early and return. A large wave carries Bethwaite into the buoy. To restart, he has to circle not only the buoy, but the committee boat ranging alongside. Has he lost his chance already? White and Davies make a powerful pair. They revel in a blow-up wind and they're going flat out to preserve that points lead to the end. 
after a middling start mark finds himself in the middle of the swarm he's twenty two points and seven places behind white sweden stefan schoestrom crewed by his sailmaker just makes it to the first mark second napier with Pajot a close third and leading for the title. Then comes another Frenchman, Fontaine. White is fifth. Surtey is sixth. Bethwaite, weight, amazingly, is already up to seventh. Napier is first to go for his kite and takes the lead. Suddenly, Pajot, closing from third, slows like a bird that has broken its wing. The spinnaker pole was forced under the forest and it broke. Normally, it is held back by the guy. Then, in a gust of wind, we let it slip and it hit the stay. We were third and White was sixth and Beth White seventh. This was good for us, good enough to win. White, with the red and yellow spinnaker, has one worry removed. But there's another. Fontaine loves him as he tries to pass, so he goes for the Frenchman's lee, but is too close and only slows down. Beth White, coming up very fast, aims to pass both in the same swoop. Frenchman left Bethwaite. Bethwaite was in a bit of problem there. Tried to avoid the Frenchman, they collided. And somehow the spinnaker pole and the Frenchman spinnaker got tangled up. See the incident once more. Bethwaite is clear past White. He appears to be past Fontaine too, though he's a little close for comfort. Now Fontaine makes his luff, very, very late. Worse is to come. As the pair part, Fontaine sails away with Bethwaite's spinnaker sheet still attached to his pole, and the strain breaks Bethwaite's own pole. Meanwhile, Fontaine's crew scrambles back into the boat. Well, we were lucky today, really, because uh, the two main opposition broke their spinning poles. But the race isn't over yet. White has one more worry. Surtees, four times American champion, is pushing Napier hard for the lead. By the second weather mark, the American is in front. Sjöström is third. Fontaine, still soldiering on, is fourth. Parent, fifth. And White, now sixth. If White drops more places, the title will go to the USA for the first time ever. Obviously the kind of weather we like. It was a difficult race. I think the wind was very gusty and uh, we had some problems. We, we nearly went over two or three times. White and Davis sail faultlessly upwind and down. Along the reaches, they really sizzle, but they don't overtake anyone. Behind, Pajot has pulled out. But Bethwaite's crew, Ian Pitt, gallantly lashes the two bits of his broken pole together with a piece of line. They sail the first reach without their kite, then hoist just before the jibe mark. Up ahead, Surtees sails full and fast on the final beat, with Napier now ahead again, covering as well as he can. But it's nervous stuff, for the British boat sails higher and slower than the American, which is continually widening out abreast to a position which could give him the lead 
if he smells a helpful windshield. Rob Napier sailed a very good race. We thought perhaps we were going a little better than he was to windward. We'd overtaken him twice, I think, during the race, and each time he just picked better shifts than we did to sail a better race. Coming into the finish, Napier holds his lead. Surtees has to be happy with second. White and Davis cross seventh. Although they've won, neither are certain of it. They have to be reassured before they congratulate each other as the new world champions. Surtees comes second overall, Pajot third, and Bethwaite fourth. The Royal Hong Kong Yacht Club put over two years' hard work into this championship. Dunhill generously added their money and expertise. The locals gave hospitality of the sort that makes lifelong friendships. The competition was top class, and the course was a sporting, if bumpy and shifty one, over good open water. The 5-0 Worlds of 73 was one of the very good ones, one of the best. Well, we've been in the class a long while. <laughs> we've been struggling for five years. So we got there in the end.